Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Payment Services Lead of North America for Accenture, Robert Flynn. Good morning. Good morning. Everyone have a good night last night? Good evening? Yeah? A lot of empty chairs I see in the back. Some, some people must have had a really good night. My name is Robert Flynn. I am Accenture's North America lead for payment services. And in my day-to-day -day job, I talk to a lot of customers, banks, networks, exchanges, processors, technology firms, retailers, municipalities, government organizations, even in oil and gas companies. And in my personal life, I have a lot of customer interaction with the merchants I, I go to every day, and I'm surrounded by consumers everywhere I go every day of the week. The one common theme across my business and personal life is the customer rules. Let's watch this. Simple, personal, every day. Consumers want a simple experience, one and done. They want payment options as individual as they are, and they want everyday payment options that fit in their everyday life. No complexity. Customer experience is everything. So this past summer, uh, June to July, we conducted our annual uh, 2015 consumer payment study uh, and survey. And coming out of that, that was the big theme that we saw from the data. Five key trends emerged. First, the evolution in the way to pay continues to grow and expand. Number two, mobile payment awareness is higher than ever. And that is a really big deal because it's a big surge since, since last year. Number three, rewards, loyalty can really speed mobile adoption, and that's really important. Peer-to-peer -peer payments are on the move, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And then number five, connected commerce is really worth watching, and that's going to be really, really exciting. And so part of the, uh, part of the survey data that came in, we asked the consumers in North America, that's US and Canada, 4,000 of them, how do you use your payment instrument today. Where do you use it? What do you use for, for smartphone? What is the frequency that you use uh, your smartphone for mobile payments? And, and what do you use it on? Do you use it on convenience stores? Do you use it in, in restaurants? Or do you pay other people? 
So some of the data here, when you look at this, kind of describes the, the different amount of regular, and that's weekly or daily, use of those payment vehicles. Now there's 13 different categories up there. The thing that's, that's really amazing is this list continues to expand. Even last year, we only had seven or eight different categories. We're up to 13, what's it gonna be next year? So think about your own personal lives. Think about your business lives when you're traveling. What do you use to pay at merchants, to pay at hotels, to pay other people? Think about that. Now, what does your significant other use? Are they the same or different than you? So let me tell you about, about me. I, uh, I have a family of six. Uh, it's my wife and I and four boys. And when I travel, I use credit cards a lot. But when I'm at home, I use cash. Two different pay payment vehicles that I use very fre frequently in two different situations. My wife writes a lot of checks and rarely uses cash. She'll use credit card periodically, but writes a lot of checks. My two older boys, both of them in college, both use debit card very consistently. One uses cash because he's in the restaurant industry. The other never has or carries any cash ever. They both use PayPal and Venmo. And then you have my nine-year-old. My nine-year-old largely works with Google Wallet and gift cards and trades them with his friends and, and his brothers. And then you have my five-year-old, largely runs a cash business or a coin business, whatever he finds. And so six people each do it differently. And so when you expand that out to the population, it creates a very individualized profile that's necessary and is really the challenge for the industry to accommodate. So let's look at some of the data. 67% say they use cash regularly, weekly or daily. Look at checks, 16% continue to, to stay strong. What's really amazing though about the, the digital payments here is despite the, the emerging nature of these, some of these are at or surpassing where legacy and some of the traditional payments have been. And you have to look at this and you say, why is that? Obviously, because simple, personal, and everyday really rings true, and it's largely about time and friction. Time because you know, some of these payment vehicles have been in place for 20, 30, 40 years, and we're used to the way we do it. My example is I actually learned in eighth grade to write checks in a class in junior high. That was the same class I used type or learned typewriting skills on a key strike typewriter, seriously. So that is how ingrained it is in the way we, we handle our everyday business. So we then ask consumers, where do you expect to be five years from now? In 2020, what do you expect to be your regular payment or preferred payment instrument? Big change here. So while last year we were very, very similar to this year, 67%, 2020 individuals expect to be using, 58% of the individuals expect to be using cash as their primary weekly, daily uh, payment choice. Look at checks, hanging in there still. So what's gonna make that move? Clearly a lot of optimism around, around digital payments. So, one of the big findings from this uh, survey was that there is a surging growing awareness of an individual's ability to use their mobile phone to transact at the store. Surging, it was 43% last year, that's a huge increase in one year. The challenge is only 18% today actually do it. So you have this huge gap between those that are aware and those that actually do. So think about your own situations again. If you've tried paying with a, a, uh, a Google Wallet or Apple Pay in the store or some other payment mechanism, and you tried it, do you continue to do it? Why did you back off if you did? What was the experience that caused you not to continue to do it? This gap is a big, a big opportunity for a variety of reasons. Um, that 18% was actually 17% last year. So although you had a surging awareness, right, it's practically unchanged around those that actually do it.
So what, what do you do with that? How do, you, how do you actually get to the next step? How do you get from a surging awareness, low usage, and, and change that? How do you move the needle? Well, 79% actually in the survey said they would respond if they were given opportunity for coupons or discounts in, in the merchant location. So that's one opportunity. Loyalty and loyalty mechanisms, both pre-purchase pre as well as post-purchase, is a huge opportunity. And I'll tell you a little bit about one of my experiences. Um, I actually went, uh, about three weeks ago, I went into a Starbucks, and I'm not sure how many of you have heard and, and know that you can order ahead your Starbucks coffee. So maybe half, maybe half of the group. So I went in and I, uh, I ordered ahead and I, I'm sitting there and I had, got lucky because I got a parking spot right in front of the door and I could see when the coffee was placed on the counter. And I waited and I waited, I saw it placed and I went in and I, I had to kind of move through a small group of people who were standing around the counter. And uh, I felt judgment in their eyes as I grabbed the, the coffee. Right, but I love the experience, right? They made something that was simple, even more simple, more convenient, and now I do it all the time. Now, there will be individuals that will continue to go into the store. They will continue to do that because that's part of their personal experience. I choose to, you know, I have my routine and I, I'd like to go in. I don't like waiting in line at all. I don't hang out in there very much. And so that's my personal experience. And so everyone's personal experience is what drives, in, in our view, drives their ability and desire to adopt. 46% have used P2P payment apps at least once in our survey. So many of the, the responses said that they primarily use it for ad hoc transactions, on the go, small convenience store, you know, fast casual type restaurants. So 46%, that's a very meaningful number for P2P apps. So let me ask the group here, how many of you have, since coming to Las Vegas, used your mobile phone to make a payment? I would say no more than 10%, 10%. Raise your hands, who are they? So miss right there, let me ask you, go ahead and pull up the app that you use to make a payment. Or how did you make it? Okay. Who used a mobile phone to make a, a payment? Sir, go ahead and do that. Pull out your app. Go ahead and activate it. Okay. Just as fast as you. I can pull this out just as fast as you can pull up the app. That's the, that's the rub. That's the challenge in that it's hard to beat the ease of use, the frictionless aspect of cash and cards and things that we're so used to. And so defining that personal experience is so important and it has to be frictionless. It has to be the simple, personal, and everyday. So I actually was having dinner about six, uh, about six weeks ago and down at my end of the table is a big family of us and friends and there are six millennials sitting around me and two baby boomers. And I, as I sometimes do, I went kind of rapid fire, asked them kind of how they, how they use their phone for payments. All six of the millennials, without exception, quickly said they use PayPal or Venmo. Those were the two options each one of them gave. And they gave it with energy, right? They were very interested in just that topic. The two baby boomers, I asked the first baby boomer, you know, he had no idea what I was even talking about. The other baby boomer actually did. I was surprised. I expected neither one of them to, to understand, but he did. Now, he, he meets that... Uh, affluent, higher income, um, digitally savvy uh, profile. But he actually had used it in relation to transacting with a millennial. So there's this theme, obviously, of millennials. And you know, that's a, a very popular, kind of well-discussed uh, well theme, as well as affluent. The challenge is you have to be careful. You can't design for a category. Categorical is not personal. You have to design for the personal experience that individuals have. Now, it's great to talk about kind of groups and it helps from a marketing and a, you know, as you figure out how a company's gonna line up their investments to, to look at categories. But as it comes to designing the solutions, it has to be personal. So, what's next? Will we have, uh, 
payments that are initiated from wearables? Yes, absolutely. 21% in our survey actually said they had used a wearable to make a payment at least once. That was a surprise to me. That was a much bigger number than I anticipated. We think partly was because of, of uh, obviously watch and jewelry related um, purchases, but also because of um, entertainment related um, wearables such as, such as Disney, Disney bands. So what other opportunities are out there? Obviously the internet of things, big opportunity um, for figuring out how you connect commerce to payments and how will that change the pre-purchase the payment itself, and the post-purchase experience. Big opportunity. Will chip and finger be a thing? How about, how about a macaroni and cheese dash button? What could be easier, really, than pushing this button and getting a box of macaroni and cheese at my doorstep tomorrow? You gotta watch out if you have a five-year-old and you leave this on the counter. Simple and everyday ends up being a whole different thing and it comes at dinner time. Um, these things like this are changing the way we look at, at customer experience. So when you think of opportunities with connected commerce and, and cars, for instance, will you actually fill up your car and auto pay for fuel? Will you exit a parking deck and it auto initiates a payment to the garage uh, company instead of swiping your card at the exit? What about ordering food or ordering pizza on your way to pick it up at a grocery store or at a, at a takeout pizza place? All of those are opportunities, but they all come back to this theme of personal, simple, and everyday. And I think if the group here can focus on that type of customer experience, it really has the opportunity to change the way we all pay and our kids. So with that, I'll leave you, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. I know there's a great agenda planned for the rest of the day, and uh, have a great rest of the week. Thank you.